Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today we will learn about bulk boost converter. From our previous lesson, we have learned about bulk and boost converter where bulk is used to step down the input voltage while boost is used to step up the input voltage. But now we have a bulk boost converter. So what is the function of the bulk boost converter? So as the name implies, a bulk boost converter can do both function either to step up or to step down the voltage. So here is the schematic diagram of the bulk boost converter where we have a passive switch here where it is in flip direction. Okay, and then we have a, an active switch, an inductor, a capacitor as well as the resistive load. Okay. And then to see the relationship between the input and output, uh, there are two states that needs to be considered. So the first one is when switch is closed and the second one is when switch is open. So when switch is closed, the input voltage here will be transferred to the inductor only. Okay, and then when switch is open, the stored energy here will be transferred to the capacitor as well as to the to the resistive load okay okay now let's do the analysis when the switch is closed first so when switch is closed the input voltage here will be transferred to the inductor only while the output stage here will be isolated so using kvl we will get vs equal to vl where vl is also given by l dil over dt rearrange them we will get dil over dt equal to vs over l and this is the waveform for the inductor voltage when switch is closed and when switch is open and this is the waveform for the inductor current okay so from this figure, we will get dil over dt equal to delta il over dt equal to vs over l. So, this is the time taken when the switch is closed. Okay, so this is dt. Here dt. Okay, and this is delta il. So, finally, we will get Delta IL close equal to VSTT over L. So let this be equation number 1. When the switch is open, the stored energy here will be transferred to the capacitor as well as to the resistive load. And then as the diode is flipped here, okay. So, the current can continue to flow but in the opposite direction. Thus, the polarity here should also be reversed. It's a little bit confusing here as it is depends on how you want to analyze it. But to simplify, just let VL equal to V out. And then we also know that VL is also given by L DIL over DT. And then rearrange them, we will get dil over dt equal to v out over l. Next, from the figure, we can find delta dil over dt equal to delta il over 1 minus dt, which is equal to v out over l. So this is actually delta il, and this is the time. And the switch is open. So T minus DT equal to 1 minus DT. So this is how you get this 1 minus DT. Okay. And finally, we can find delta IL open equal to V out times 1 minus DT over L. So let this be equation number 2. Okay. For a steady state operation, we know that delta IL closed plus delta IL open must be zero. So by substituting equation 1 and 2, we will get
So now we can cancel T with T and L with L. So finally, we will get V out equal to minus VSD over 1 minus D. Okay. But please note that the negative sign here indicates that the output voltage has a opposite polarity from the input just like what I've mentioned in the previous slide. And also, please note that if D is greater than 0.5, so the output must be higher than the input okay and then if d is less than 0 0.5 the output voltage must be lower from the input okay next by assuming that the circuit is using an ideal components the average input power supplied by the source must be the same as the average power absorbed by the load so in other words input power must be equal to output power so vs is equal to v out i out where is is given by ild so now by substituting this is we will get vs ild equal to v out square over r but then we know that before this v out is given by minus VSD over 1 minus D. So, substituting this V out, we will get this. Okay, and then we can cancel D with D and VS with VS. So, finally, we will get IL equal to VSD over 1 minus D square R. Okay. Next, for the maximum inductor current, it can be determined by using VSD over 1 minus T square R plus VSDT over 2L. So, actually, this IL is coming from this formula. Okay, and then for the minimum inductor current, it is given by VSD over 1 minus D square R minus VSDT over 2L. For a continuous current mode or CCM, I mean must be greater than or equal to zero. And from the previous slide, we know that I mean is given by VSD over 1 minus D square R minus VSDT over 2L. And then to find the inductor value, we need to calculate L mean first, where L mean is given by 1 minus D square R over 2F. Okay, and then we can calculate L using 1.25 L min. Okay, and finally for the ripple factor, it can be found using D over RCF. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for listening.